Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here, Genetry Solar. About two years ago, actually, this month, I think around this month, next month, somewhere around there, we got this uh, this Ream hybrid heat pump water heater. I've got a couple of videos on that. You can search the channel for that. Uh, this is the Proterra model. It's 80 gallons. And sometimes, not often, but sometimes I get asked about, hey, how's it, you know, how's it doing? How's it, you know, we're looking at getting one. Uh, they're considerably more expensive than a standard uh, either gas or electric water heater. So what's the deal? Is it worth the extra price? Are you saving money? Well, I'm not going to get into the money aspect of it yet. It is cheaper to heat water, but will it actually save you money in the long run? That depends on how long the compressor system is going to last. We also have a heat pump dryer which uh, is very similar to this as far as the technology goes. Essentially, the compressor that sits on top heats the water. It extracts the heat, so to speak, heat out of the surrounding air and um, blows it basically out as cold air. Um, and heat pumps are like this. If you want to get into the technicalities, it's there's a lot of information on how it does it, but uh, essentially it's transferring the warmer air from the surrounding area into the tank itself. Um, air conditioners, such as this one that's sitting down here on the floor, doesn't actually cool the air. It merely transfers the heat uh, from one place to the next. And this is kind of what that's doing here, same principle. But um, there are some things that you got to know when you're getting into one of these things and it's not something that the manual even talks about and there's some serious shortcomings in the technology in general how it's set up in this application which is heating water there are some some drawbacks that most will not ever even consider or will never even be mentioned to them uh, you go to your local hardware store Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, whatever, and you look at one of these, they're never going to tell you, oh, by the way, this is a possible issue. So the issue that I'm talking about is, of course, clogged filters and actually clogged uh, condensers. So as I said, it's a heat pump that sits on top, saves, obviously, money on electricity because it's using the heat pump rather than the twin elements to heat the water, which works great. It is slower to heat water, but overall, it actually does use less uh, energy uh, to heat the same gallon of water versus just using the elements. So there is a big problem, and I finally had to pull the lid off. Here's the lid to it right here. I finally had to pull the lid off because uh, this area here that you see here, this is where the compressor fan is right here. So it actually pulls air uh, from the lid, brings it down across the condenser, and pushes out the cold air here. Fine. The problem is that a filter alone is not capable of filtering out everything that is going through the system. And I'll show you, even if you change your filters or clean your filters on a regular basis, even if you do that, inevitably what's going to happen, I'm going to get my light here so you can see this a little bit better. Inevitably what's going to end up happening is you're going to get ice forming on this condenser. And this is not because of lack of maintenance. Believe me, about every three months or so, I take the filter out and uh, I blow it out with an air compressor, clean it up really good, vacuum it, so it's, it's good. The problem is, is that that doesn't filter everything out. So on both sides of this compressor is ice that is starting to build up. Now, just to be aware, the power is cut. It's not even connected. The hot lines aren't even connected, uh, the, but the power is cut no matter what. I did um, close the breaker or open the breaker, so to speak. But anyway, there's no power going to this thing. But you can see where ice is forming. And what that does is that causes problems where it'll actually start to shut the compressor down with errors. 
uh, and you'll get an error on your app that will say something like uh, compressor performance or clogged drain or whatever. Um, you probably can't see too well down in there, but I don't have a clogged drain down there. Uh, there's nothing that's trapped down there. It's just the performance of the what the system is expecting as far as intake and exhaust temperatures is not there. It's essentially not doing a very good job of heating the water. It just cannot make that exchange very efficiently. So then you begin to wonder, okay, is it even working properly? Well, again, the problem here, and this is a whole nother problem right here. This is just from me putting the filter in and out. The filter sits right here, pretty much touching these. The filter sits right here. And if you don't have the filter perfectly lined up, you're gonna bang into this. It's actually kind of a, a ridiculous design why they couldn't move it back a little bit uh, because inevitably you're gonna end up hitting these things. This isn't for me to pull the lid off because the lid comes right off. This is from me taking the filter out and putting the filter back in. And again, if you don't line it up straight up, then you're gonna end up bumping into this. So you can see that I've done this several times, obviously. I have uh, cleaned this filter out, which I do, again, about every three months. And it does remind you every so often to clean your filter and you just reset it. It'll actually show up as an, an alarm. Uh, and it's nothing more than a reminder. But after a while, uh, the heat pump just does not work all that well. And again, it comes down to filtering. This filter that sits here, while it does a pretty good job taking out the big stuff, I'll, you can see all of this, this is all dust. This is all build up of dust. This isn't ice. This is all dust that has built up. So it's clogging the condenser. And eventually what happens is it starts to ice over. And then when it ices over, then it's, it's, it's not working very well. It's not very efficient. So it takes a lot longer to heat a gallon of water versus when this is cleaned out and it can cause other problems like damage. It can overheat the compressor. Now there's safeties here that help prevent that. There's a bunch of sensors here that will, there's an intake air sensor, there's an exhaust sensor um, that basically tells it how it's doing. Uh, I have read with these water heaters that those sensors can go bad, um, but to, to be completely honest with you, I don't think they would go bad if this, this wasn't an issue. And this is just a major downside until they can come up with some way because with the lid on top, you cannot get, I mean, yes, you could technically get some kind of a, a brush to kind of go back and forth the best you can. They do make brush cleaning brushes for uh, these. You could do that, but who does? They, the, the manual says replace or excuse me, clean your filter. It doesn't say, by the way, get a cleaning brush and go up and down these uh, this coil here and clean out all the stuff that the filter doesn't grab. So after a couple of years, which has been two years, you start running into these issues. And unless you have some kind of an extended service on this where you can actually uh, have somebody come out and service it, uh, you're either going to deal with it, you're gonna go back to electric mode and never use the compressor, uh, you know, there's there's all sorts of things and it just kind of it's a waste of money then thereafter now We do have an extended service plan on this. It's five years on ours However, after the first year they only send you parts and if you need to have somebody come out To service it then it's not covered. That's only covered within the first year But clearly this doesn't become a problem until after about two years So you've got this water heater here that you're thinking is working just fine and uh, it, as it turns out, it's really not. It's slowly losing efficiency. It's slowly running into this problem. Now, some of it could be a drain issue, which again, I have checked and this drain is clear, but it's mainly that the condenser is clogged because of all the dust, the stuff that cannot be picked up by the standard dust filter gets stuck in here and you have to pull the lid or pull the top off of it and then you have the air compressor or a brush or whatever I would recommend an air compressor make sure you're wearing a mask or something because this this stuff is gonna go everywhere um, but uh, you have to wait for the condenser to obviously thaw and blow it all out and get it all nice and clean and then you're all set and then while you're at it you can actually get to this fan here 
which is caked with dust. Now, I have tried, I've got a, uh, a long reach air compressor attachment. I don't have it handy right now, but it's small enough to be able to reach in here and kind of blow all this out. And that's fine, but you can never truly clean the condenser unless you have physical access to it. And again, you can pull the filter, but look how tiny this little spot is. Look at this. No one, especially on the 80 gallon. This 80 gallon is tall. It's about, I would say maybe six foot, five inches tall. It's tall. I'm standing on a toolbox right now just to do this. Yes, I could get a little extension ladder or whatever. I mean, one of those pull out ladders, whatever they call those. Anyway, um, but nobody is going to stand up with a light on top of this, especially if you have it in a closet or, you know, whatever, and look down in here to see what the problem is. Very, very few people are going to do that. So this is a problem. It's not a problem with the technology. It is a problem with the design. The filters just cannot keep up. And it all depends on where you're at, of course, what... If you're in a dusty area, dusty climate, I'm in the basement, I burn wood for heat, so it's extra dusty down here. Um, but just cleaning out your filter isn't enough. Dust will get by that filter and it will eventually clog up the condenser. So this is something for all of you to be aware of. If you're interested in one of these things, be aware that you're likely gonna have to get your hands dirty when you're cleaning these out. Unless you don't mind paying, which negates the savings <laughs> they're not going to come out and do it for 100 bucks. Trust me, they're not. Um, it negates the savings if you actually have to call somebody out to pop the top and then clean it all out. You're probably going to be paying three, $400 just to do that, just for it to be serviced. And it starts to toss those savings. And if you have to do that every two years for the supposed 20-year lifespan of these things... Um, you're not saving that much money by going with a heat pump water heater. Now, if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you understand what's involved and you can pop the top yourself. It'll, you know, obviously now, okay. So here's the thing. I, I can say that it'll avoid a warranty, but from the forums that I've been reading on these particular water heaters, Ream actually has you pop the top over the phone and look at some of this stuff. If you need service, they have a programming mode that they put this into and they read that programming mode to see if a sensor's gone bad and if it has then they literally tell you take the top off you know they tell you cut your power and all that stuff but you know it it i still have to say you could possibly void your warranty but uh they actually encourage it uh pulling the or popping the top to see what's going on but again, you wouldn't see that in the instruction manual. You wouldn't see that. Nobody's going to say that at the store that you bought it from. Nobody's going to be like, hey, by the way, in two years, you might have to pop the top on this thing and clean out your condenser. Nobody's going to say that. And to those who are technical savvy or very familiar with condensers, compressors, etc., cetera, um, you would already know that this is a possibility. You would already be well aware of this as a possibility. But for the average consumer, which is what these are marketed for, they are marketed for energy saving for the average consumer, you're not going to know that. And you're expecting you've probably replaced a 20-year-old water heater with this thing expecting to get 20 years, and in two years the compressor stops working. Not because it's a fault with the compressor, but because of the, the buildup that occurs. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my big compressor and my air compressor, I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to blow out all this dust and get everything all cleaned out, get get it thawed out. Um, and, you know, then I'll be okay for probably another year, year and a half, and then i got to do it all over again. So it is more maintenance that is required, not something that they tell you about. So be aware that is a possibility. Now, we do have an 80-gallon water heater. We do go through a lot of hot water because there are a total of up to nine individuals in this house so we do go through a lot of hot water so this thing is always working but that's still if we had a standard hot water heater that did not have the compressor on top of it we would not have to worry about this so it's just something to consider to weigh in on the pros and cons with one of these things they don't tell you 
that your condenser is going to become clogged up. They just don't tell you. Yes, you will eventually get an error code. The compressor will stop running and they'll tell you to call for service. But that's only if you have the app. The Econet app will tell you, and I have mine connected, of course. But if you don't have the app, it's not like it's going to sound an alarm. The compressor is just going to shut off and it's going to go into pure electric mode. The heating elements will then take over from there. You may not even be aware for years, you may not even be aware that your hot water heater is not efficient. You're looking at your electric bill thinking, what the heck? I thought this was supposed to be better. Not everybody's going to use the app. So unless you physically walk up to the hot water heater, which most people do not, I mean, I walk by it every day because I'm loading the wood furnace, but most people don't look at their hot water heater screen and, and they're like, oh, I'm going to check on the health of my hot water heater. Most people don't. So unless you're really paying attention to this screen, if you don't have the app or you do have the app installed, you would not be aware that there's actually a problem with the hot water heater. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying don't get one of these, but I'm telling you that unless you have a ultra filtered house that, I mean, some people do. Um, I, my, uh, my grandparents had this ultra filtered furnace and they had filters all over but that was because my uh my grandma was uh, very sensitive to dust so they had all that stuff so you would never hardly see dust around their house um so unless you're in that situation then you know you're going to deal with this problem and it's going to be frustrating to you especially when you start noticing that either you're getting a lot of errors or you're not saving much money on your electricity now it is a, an easy fix it was a simple four screws that are on top, uh, as well as, uh, excuse me, it was eight screws in total, plus the two screws that held this in place, and then you got to kind of wiggle this around a little bit to get through that hole right there, and then you've got the lid off, no big deal. So to me, it's not a big deal, but I can tinker with this kind of stuff. Some of you may not even want to touch it. I mean, the whole point is to have a hot water heater that works for the next 20 years that's the point after 20 years you replace it on average 15 to 20 years and that's that's the whole deal if you have a gasser then sometimes you got to relight the pilot you know that that can happen but as far as electric goes they're pretty much very little to no maintenance uh the problems that are common are the uh the heating elements will actually become damaged because of buildup in the tank uh all sorts of buildup depending on if you have hard water or not Things like that. We have a water softener here to, to try to negate that. And I try not to use the elements as much as possible. Um, and, you know, flushing this out, which most people do not, flushing this out I do once a year. Actually, it's about due for it because I did it the first year, which was in January. And here we are in January again, so it's about due for a total flush. So once I can make the announcement to everybody that you're not going to have hot water for a little while... I can easily hook my hose up, which I've still got sitting back there. I can easily hook my hose up and throw it in the drain, drain out the entire tank to flush it out, hit the water, let water throw, flow through it to flush it, and then I'm all set for another year. And again, the whole point is to avoid buildup inside the tank. You don't want buildup in the tank. <clears throat> Gassers, it's a little bit different because the buildup will start at the bottom because of the heat at the bottom and that can reduce your efficiency because the flame comes from the bottom. With these, it's just a slow buildup and it starts working it up. It'll calcify the, the, the elements um, and then chunks will start falling off and it'll start building up at the bottom, things like that. It's basically not as efficient. Some people who I've talked to actually pull their elements once a year and clean them off, which is another possibility that you could do. But uh, again, that requires draining the tank um, you know, there's all sorts of things. If you, if you really, really love doing this stuff, then fine. It's, it's going to save you money. If you just want to set it and forget it, you're not going to like this, this, this technology, this type of water heater. The, what they call heat pump or hybrid water heaters. You're not going to like it. Trust me, you're just not going to like it. So uh, that is, you know, hopefully, you know, you're fully aware of what's going on. It is a completely different beast. And... That's just a fair kind of assessment to the situation I'm in. I can easily clean this out, get it back going, and it's going to perform almost like new again. But 
Now, if it was a pure electric water heater, I wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. So it's something to be aware of. They're considerably more expensive for one of these things. And again, the, the goal is, you know, over 20 years, you're saving money in the long run because, you know, you're paying it back basically in the savings and eventually it's cheaper to run in the long run. But again, if you're having to call a service technician out, spend $250, $300 for them to clean it all out twice a year, um, are you really saving money? These are definitely more work than a standard water heater. So it's just the way that it is. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If uh, you have any questions, let me know, of course. And this is the Ream Performance Platinum. I don't even know if they make these anymore. Proterra. Um, this little bit of rust here is because we had a little bit of water dripping from one of our Right there you can see just a little drip so it came down to the side here and that's why this is a little bit rusty but these things they're they're pretty good you know you don't have to really worry about it that much because um, it's a water heater so at any rate uh, if you have any questions let me know hopefully this video has been helpful and take care